Hello, my lovelies, and welcome back to another episode of the Your Cooking Canuck. On today's segment of Memories of Macedonia, I'm going to be making something called Compir e Praz Chorba. And what that simply means is a potato and leek soup or a stew. Um, the recipe is very simple. Um, again, this is hearty, stick to your ribs, and it's really good when the weather is cold. So come on, let's go and whip this up. We'll go in the kitchen and make this potato and leek soup. <laughs> Well, as usual, welcome to the kitchen countertop, and this is everything we're going to need to make this um, potato and leek chorba, or soup. Um, of course, you're going to need compir, or potatoes. Um, four large ones will do. I have six medium-ish, kind of small ones here. Um, and of course, you're going to need leeks. Now, um, <clears throat> with leeks, you're not going to use all of the green, maybe about an inch or so above. So once it's all chopped and said and done, you're gonna need about five, possibly six leeks, depending on their size. And I'll get into those in just a bit. Um, you're also gonna need some kind of stock. I don't have any chicken stock. However, you can use vegetable stock as well. So I'm gonna be just um, diluting two chicken bouillon cubes in some boiling water to add to the soup. Salt and pepper to taste. You're also going to need some butter oh, and a uh, little bit of cream um, or milk. And I've almost forgot. And just a little bit of olive oil to help the butter along. So this is everything you're going to need, guys. Um, the first step is to prepare your leeks. And I'll show you how I do that in just a sec. Hey, gang. So here is um, one of my leeks. And I'm going to prepare this for washing. So I'm going to cut them about, as I said, the green part, a, a couple of inches above the white. Don't throw these out. Um, you can save them for stock. They make amazing stock. So that's all they're pretty much good for. So I'm going to set them aside. Right, and then I'm going to take the root end off. Now leeks are infamous for being dirty, and that's why we chop it first. And I mean, if you need to wash these two or three times, go ahead. This one's not too bad, but in here is where you want to look for the dirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead Chop my leeks up into pieces. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop them into this colander. Or you can use a large bowl and um, rinse them in a large bowl and the sediment will go to the bottom. However, I just think this is a safer way of doing it. Um, right, so I'm gonna continue with all of my leeks and once they're done, I'll bring you back. All right, simple guys. Hey gang, I'm back real quick. I forgot to mention garlic is optional. Um, so you can add some garlic. <clears throat> and also sometimes when um, the outer, the most outer leaf of the leek may be tough and you'll know, cause when you start cutting through it, you'll feel it and once give way so get rid of that it's it's too tough and it's not it's not going to melt down as nicely as the other ones so i forgot to mention that um also my leeks were pretty clean however i did find a few that had some mud or dirt in there so it's really important to wash them and i'll show you that in just a second hey guys so i'm at the kitchen and i've sliced all my leeks as you can see here and what i'm going to do is start running cold water now as i said you can do this in a bowl if you want as well but what you're going to do is start mixing it up and letting the cold water thoroughly wash the leeks and when you think you've got to the point where they're clean don't stop do it again keep going. 
Now, alternatively, what you can do is put your colander in a bowl, fill it up with water, let the sediment come out, bring it out, dump the bowl, and repeat. However, I'm going to continue with this, and then I'll bring you back to the stove, and we'll get started. Hey gang, welcome to the stove top. So in this pot, I started to melt my butter with a little bit of olive oil, and <clears throat> I have to say, you need a good amount of butter. Um, I'm going to say about three tablespoons and a little splash of olive oil, because the olive oil will help the butter um, not burn. But, I mean, it's not going to burn because you're going to add your leeks in here anyway. But. So that being said, at this point in time, I washed and rewashed my leeks, so they're going to go in the pan. Mmm, the smell of the butter is lovely. Now, I know it looks like a lot of leeks, guys, because it is, but what we're going to do is we're going to cook these leeks for about a half an hour, and it's an important step. I'm not kidding. Um, the reason being is we want these to be super, uber, duper soft and break down. Again, whenever I cook with leeks, I always tell you guys, you know, and I always stress over and over to wash them and how important it is. I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record. However, leeks are one of the most beautiful flavors in nature um, that we're lucky enough to have. And I would hate for you to make a recipe, especially something that I've made, um, and then it tastes like dirt or there's grit in your teeth. Right, so at this point, there's really not much um, for you to see until these get really, really soft. So continuously um, check on them. I mean, you don't have to stand right beside them, um, but come back and give them a stir in that butter and oil. And also at this time, what I'm going to do is add my garlic. Now, garlic, as I said, is optional. You don't have to put it in. However, I love garlic. So it's going in. In addition to a good couple of pinches of salt. And what the salt will do as well, it will help break down the leeks and it will help them sweat out and get softer. Already you can see how much has gone down already. So, right, so I'm gonna keep at this and I'll bring you back in a while because um, I'm gonna cook these for a good half hour and um, through the magic of video, um, I'll see you back here, half hour of my time, in just a few seconds yours. See you in a bit, guys. Hey, friends. Welcome back to the kitchen. Well, as you can see, the leaks have reduced quite significantly. And I meant to mention, when you're simmering this, you want to have it on a minimum, very low heat. Oh, my cat smells it, too. All right, Mandula. All right, so, at this point in time... Um, what I've done in the meantime was I've peeled and chopped my potatoes. I set them in a bowl of water so they don't turn color. So you can go ahead and start adding your potatoes in quite large-ish cubes. And I'll show you why later. Now, in the meantime, I did taste um, the leeks. And the salt factor was fine. I just added a little bit of pepper to them. And you should taste your food as you go, guys. Right, so potatoes are in. Give them a mix. Get everybody to know each other. And I'm using my medium-sized pot, guys. Um, I believe it's a three quart. Then I'm gonna add my stock. Now, when you do are using bouillon, depending on the bouillon that you use, they all have a different salt factor. I'm using a low sodium 
Um, that's the thing, when you don't have your own homemade stock, you're kind of at the mercy of the bouillon cube. So I tasted mine and I decided to add a third cube. Right. So I I just have a little bit more hot water here. I'm going to just swirl what's left in here. And that's it. You're going to now, on a simmer still, let this go until the potatoes start getting soft. And then I'll bring you back. You can see already, it looks gorgeous. I mean, <laughs> once these potatoes co are cooked, I'd eat it like that. So, right guys, so I'll bring you back once the potatoes are soft and I'll show you what I do then. Hey gang, welcome back. Right, so I let this simmer until my potatoes are very, very soft. Quite soft, actually, as you can see. What I'm going to do at this point, now this is optional, but in Macedonia, a lot of our chorbas have um, a bit of texture to them. I mean, unless this is a crema soup, a cream soup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my mixture out now, the um, leeks and potatoes. I'm just going to put them in the same jug I used for the stock. It's not a problem. Put them in a bowl, whatever. And what I'm going to do with this is once I puree this, I'm going to add this back just to give it a little more texture. Right. That's about it. You don't need a lot. Put that aside for now. Sorry for the noise. All right. At this point, you're going to go ahead and puree with your immersible blender. Your woo woo guy. I'm going to do this off camera because it's loud and annoying. So you don't need to hear that. Right. Everyone knows you just stick this in, slowly go around um, until it's blended smoothly. And then I'll bring you all back when that's done. Simple. All right, guys, as you can see, this soup has been pureed. And I take and it's thick. And I've tasted it. Oh, I missed a potato. I'm going to puree this more. I've tasted it. Actually, I'm going to leave that because I'm going to be adding what we reserved anyway, so that's fine. Um, I've tasted it, and it is amazing. It doesn't need one inch of seasoning. And when you season, you want to be a little bit um, aggressive with it because you are going to be adding some cream or in my case, milk. I want to keep this a little bit lighter. You can add creme fraiche. You can add double cream. It's up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a bit of milk to start with. And right now I have the heat off, guys. Oh, that looks beautiful. Beautiful. So at this point, what I want to do is go ahead and add in what I have reserved before. Oop, carefully. Just to give it some more texture. And, you know, when people eat it, they know what's in there. And look at that. That is beautiful. So guys, this is cooked through. It's heated up, and it's ready to serve, really. Um, you don't really need to simmer this anymore. You could if you wanted, but it's ready to go. That's it. Um, so I'll be back. We'll plate up and eat. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. We're plating up. Our soup is done like dinner. So nothing left to do but ladle it up. Oh, 
it just looks so good. I know it's going to taste amazing too, because I've tasted it. <laughs> crusty bread, um, a salad, side salad. Um, I happen to have some leftover hot peppers that um, from the other night, so that's what I'm serving mine up with. So guys, <clears throat> there it is. Complete. I need to get a spoon. Oh, that is just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. I'm going to taste this. It's hot still. Oh, oh my gosh. It's like velvet. And the leek flavor is incredible. Right, guys, you need to try this soup. It is so homey, and so comforting, and really, really good. I'm going to love you, and leave you, and tuck into this. Guys, thanks so much for watching Memories of Macedonia. Please like, please share, please um, comment, and try this. I really love when you guys um, do my recipes. I do have a Facebook page now, which I will put the link to. Um, in the description box below and if you do these recipes I want I want to see pictures I want to know so guys thanks so much for watching um, as usual there'll be a few photos at the end and we'll see you next time on memories of Macedonia Aida Preto Falonugu Aida Ciao